Yo, Focus Church, man. How's everybody doing today? You doing good today? Anybody excited for, for the fall? I'm going to ask that one again. Anybody excited about the fall? Anybody love 70 degree days? This is the reason why we live in Arizona, isn't it? We made it through the hard part, and now we get to live in glory for the next eight months. Come on, somebody. This is about the time of the year when I begin sending pictures of myself driving around with my sunroof open and send them to my boys back in Minnesota, and they've already gotten snow. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Favor ain't fair. Can I get an amen? I love it so much. You know, we are, we're in the middle of, of a series that we, we're calling the Holy Ghost. Somebody say holy. holy. Somebody say ghost. ghost. We're in the middle of a series called the Holy Ghost, and, and what we're doing in this series is, is we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Somebody say holy. Somebody say ghost. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. And, and, and that's one of those areas that, that when you say Holy Ghost or you say Holy Spirit, you, you, begin, to, you begin to get different responses from people. You, you begin to get a different vibe from people just on what you say, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, or whatever it is. And, and, and we want to be able to talk about this in a big way so that we can, we can understand what we're talking about. In fact, the, the, the whole part of this series really started from Binge the Bible. Man, I'm excited about Binge the Bible for November, looking at what we're truly thankful for. And, and, uh, and, 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 and in September, we were going through Binge the Bible. We were looking through the book of Ephesians as a church and, and reading through it multiple times. And there was, there was one passage in particular that really caught my own attention. And I was reading it over and over again and, and really just processing it myself and then realizing that it wasn't just for myself, but I, I really felt like God had a journey for Focus Church to go on. And that verse was found in Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 3, and it says this. It says, make every effort to keep yourselves united. Somebody say united. United, united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit. Somebody say one. one. Spirit. There's one spirit just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. See, when we read this passage right here and we're talking, Paul is talking about the Holy Spirit. The emphasis that he has is on bringing unity. Unity within the church. Yet we know that when we talk about the Holy Ghost, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it doesn't necessarily bring unity. In fact, most of the time, it will bring disagreement, it will bring division, and it will bring tension within a room. Even using the term that I have a couple of times, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, that itself can bring attention. Because there's some people who say, if you say, hey, holy, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. And you say, okay, that's great. I can talk about the Holy Spirit. But if you start talking about the Holy Ghost, then you're a little bit of a holy roller and I don't want to have anything to do with you, right? Or if you talk to somebody about the Holy Spirit and they say, hey, the Holy Spirit is great, but the Holy Ghost, come on, somebody. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. That means I'm holier than you, right? Even that terminology can bring a difference in a vibe and a disagreement that we have. But yet the emphasis is upon having unity. Somebody say unity. Now, why do we not have unity when we're talking about the Holy Ghost or we're talking about the Holy Spirit? I truly believe that, that the reason why we don't have a unity within this is because we have a, a lack of understanding. There's a lack of understanding about the Holy Ghost. There's a lack of understanding about who he is. And then there's a lack of understanding about how he works in our life. And so this entire series, the goal of this entire series is to help bring an understanding. Because if we can bring an understanding to each and every single one of us, then through that understanding, now we've got unity, right? How many of y'all, you've been in a situation with somebody and, and you're like, why on earth would they do that? Okay, let me make it a little easier for you. Anybody ever been cut off on the 60? <laughs> this morning, right? Like, and you think to yourselves, why on earth would they do that? Anybody? Yeah, right? That's exact. Every single time that happens. Why on earth? 
Well, my wife, I want you to know something, that my wife is so much better than I am. I knew where that was going to come from, too. I was waiting for you. I set you up on that one. Because when, I'm, when I get frustrated in those moments, why on earth would they do that? Here's, here's what Pastor Jenny will say. She'll say, perhaps they had this emergency. Perhaps they got a bad phone call and they had to get home immediately. Perhaps they're trying to get to that hospital that's right there. And then I say, perhaps they're an idiot, okay? <laughs> perhaps. But when we understand somebody, when you, when you hear the reason why they had to make the choice that they did, all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I get that. Oh, I, you know what? I probably would have been doing the exact same thing, right? Because there's an understanding. And so when we have an understanding about the Holy Ghost, when we have an understanding about who the Holy Ghost is and how he works inside of our life, now that understanding can bring unity. And then through that unity, now we can experience the work of the Holy Spirit inside of our own lives and inside of our church. Can I get an amen? And that's what we've been doing is we've been walking through this to be able to get an understanding. And really, through the last couple of weeks, we've been talking specifically about who he is and then some of the things that he gives us, the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And for the next four weeks, what we're going to talk about is how the Holy Ghost, how the Holy Spirit works in our life. We're going to talk about the actions of of the Holy Spirit inside of our lives to bring the attributes, the behaviors that we desire inside of this. And so for the next four weeks, we're going to be talking specifically about the work of the Holy Ghost inside of your life. And today, what we're going to talk about is one that I love so much. I love this passage so much, and I love what the Holy Ghost has done inside of my own life and inside of our church to be able to see this passage come through. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, and it says this, if you are a thief, quit stealing. That's pretty good right there. I like that one right there. I love how, I like the Bible's practical, y'all, you know what I'm saying? If you're a thief, quit stealing. But it doesn't stop right there, right? Like that, that, it's saying, hey, you got to live different. Don't live the way that you were before. Now you got to live a little bit different. Now live the way that the Holy Ghost wants you to live. And how does the Holy Ghost want you to live? It says this. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. Oh, my goodness. I love that right there. I got any Midwest people in here? I got some Midwest people. I was born in the Midwest, but I was created for the desert. Can I get an amen right there, right? I love me some AZ. You cannot shovel the sunshine, right? But I'm thankful for my Midwest roots because my, my Midwest roots gave me a work ethic. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what it's like to work hard? That's what it says. Instead, work hard. Good, hard work. And then it doesn't stop. I love it. Live differently. Live differently. Live differently. And then it says, and then give generously. Somebody say generously. Give generously to others in need. One of the biggest works that the Holy Ghost does inside of our lives is he brings an attitude and he brings a spirit of generosity. Of generosity. But one, one of the, the, the values that we have at, at Focus Church is that we believe in irrational generosity. That we want to be so generous that people are like, that doesn't make sense. And the reason why we want to be so irrational in our generosity is because we know and we serve a God who is irrationally generous to us. Can I get an amen? He keeps throwing his blessings over and over and over and over again. And through that, he teaches us how to live a generous life. That's what God does for us. That's the work of the Holy Ghost inside of our lives. And I want you to know, generous people, did, they, they do studies on this. 
Generous people. Well, let me just back up and just say this. We hear this statement in the world all the time. I, I, just, want, I just want to be happy. I just want my kids to be happy. Anybody ever heard that before? Anybody say that? You're like, I have, but I feel like I'm not supposed to now, right? Like, but we talk about happiness all the time. You want to know an easy way to be happy? Be generous. Studies show that generous people are three times more, they're, they're, they're three times happier than people that, that are not generous. Be generous. Uh, in fact, just this past weekend, uh, Pastor Jenny and I on Saturday, um, we, we set up our Christmas decorations. I got, any, I, got any, I got any people who like putting up direct decorations early? How many of you are like, not until after Thanksgiving? How many of you are like that? You know what I have to say to you? Bah humbug. Bah humbug. That's what I say to you. Because you know what they even did? They came out with a study and they said this. That people who put their decorations up earlier are... Look at the smile on my face. Come on, somebody. I woke up this morning and I put my Christmas tree on and I said, twinkle, twinkle. Come on, somebody. It was so happy inside of our house. Because, you know, here's what, here's what it does. It's not because you put up decorations. It's because Christmas is an automatic season to bring generosity to your mind. And the reason why you, you're, be, you're happier is because it already puts you into a generous spirit. Anybody ever seen a sad Santa Claus before? There ain't no pictures of sad Santa Claus before, right? And you talk about generosity. Can I get an amen? You want to be happy? Bring a spirit of generosity into your life. And the Holy Ghost is what helps bring a spirit of generosity to you. To you. This is the life that he gives us. Well, today... What we, we, we thought about doing something a little bit different. Instead of me just up here talking about generosity over and over again and giving you scripture after scripture after scripture, which I could to show you the tithe and generosity and how important it is inside of our lives. Instead, we said, you know what? Let's just show you how Focus Church itself is a generous church. And let's show you and help lead you by example of how generous Focus Church is. And so today I want to be able to bring a, a very first video of one of the organizations that we love and we support on a monthly basis. And this is, this is my favorite thing that we do around here. And it's called Supporting Children's Cup.
love, love Children's Cup. And in fact, just this past year, we got to go down there, myself and a couple of other people from on a scout trip, and, and, and we, we got to see what is happening in Honduras. And, and then we, we bought a piece of land down there, and now we've got a missions group that's going down in February to begin to do some work. And it's so exciting of what God did to help partner Children's Cup and Focus Church. And through your generosity, we're being able to help kids on a monthly basis basis. I love Children's Cup. It is one of my favorite things, and Daniel Lurkin is one of my great friends, and I just love it so much. Generosity, the Holy Ghost working inside of our lives so that we can be generous. Children's Cup, my favorite. It's also one of my favorite things that we get to be able to do is partner with our school, Sequoia Pathfinder. And today, uh, the person that we have with us is Dr. Wynn, the principal of our school. Can you please give it up with everything that you've got to our principal? I love it so much. Yes. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. I'm telling y'all. He's going to say favorite a lot today, I'm just saying. They're all my My favorite. husband's a very generous person, so we're talking about generosity, you're going to hear it a lot. But I'm so grateful to have Dr. Wim with us here today. You have been the principal of Sequoia. Is this your second year? I was trying yes, to remember. this is my second year. Come okay, on. great. So um, we've been here for nine years today, so we've had a couple of principals that we've been able to have the relationship with, and I'm Dr. so thankful. Dr. Wim's our favorite, though. Yeah, I'm telling so you she's what. our favorite. Yep. There we go. But um, the other ones were horrible. They were horrible. No, that's, not, that's true. not true. No, only a it's couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um, but first, I just wanted to hear what. Um, so, in Arizona, I tell uh, parents when they're talking to me about school that Arizona has a blessing and a curse, and it's called choice. choice. Yes. We have so many choices in yeah. Arizona, and so if you could tell us a little bit, maybe uh, people don't have kids or they don't know, but what type of school Sequoia is, and what your real vision and purpose is for being in this community. Well, first, thank you for the invite, and this transformation is amazing. I've never been here on a, on a Sunday, so all you and your team did an amazing job. Team works thank hard. You. Come on now. Uh, so Sequoia uh, Pathfinder Academy to East Mark, we've been here for 10 years. Uh, I've been here the last two years. It is a school of choice for a K-6 school. Uh, our focus is on STEAM education, where we offer two evenings throughout the fall and spring semester where students get to showcase their abilities using the um, science, technology, engineering, arts and music. Uh, they do have all those specials as well. Uh, we also focus on Spanish. This is a work in progress. We integrate some Spanish into our K-3 program and we offer Spanish class for our fourth through sixth graders. Our focus moving forward is to continue those endeavors and recruit uh, students and families who have the same vision and mission for their own children. Love it so much. The specials are like, I mean, we have, both of our sons went through. Yeah, all we're the way products. Through, yeah, all the Sequoia. way through, can, yeah, <laughs> kindergarten through sixth grade. Yes. We've got a sixth grader now. And, and uh, the specials are like, he's like, woohoo, I got a lot of specials today. <laughs> yeah, so the specials that we offer are music, P.E., P.E.'s Lego, his favorite. Legos. Legos. Lego. Yeah. Lego class. Anybody want Lego class? <laughs> Where was that in school, man? Spanish. No. Uh, we also have the Arizona Science Center that comes and serves our students yeah, for about an hour and that. 15 minutes uh, every other week. Love yeah. it. So one thing that we've really enjoyed about being at Sequoia is that it hasn't been just like we rent this space Correct. from the school. It's been a true partnership. At least we feel that it's been a true partnership. We've been able uh, to come alongside right off the bat. Um, your predecessor principal was like, let's get you guys invested in the PTO. So we started right away giving to the PTO so that your basis. generosity is yes. going right to the PTO here. Yep. And it's liquid funds so that Sequoia can do what they need to do. 100%. But then when some of the like things come up, like there wasn't a lot of playground equipment at first out yeah. there. When that initiative came up, we were able to help with that. We actually, you and I actually helped with it. We were out there moving. I had some. to go see the chiropractor <laughs> after that day. There's a lot of wood chips. I'm so telling you. So not just our like monetary generosity, but our time and generosity Blood, sweat, and as well. Blood, sweat, tears in that day. That's what that was. Yes, yeah, so we've been able to help uh, supply some things to the makers room. There have been a lot of different ways that we've been able to partner. Um, and the teachers, we like to spoil the teachers, like getting them dinners, or um, we even did Amazon gift cards one year Come to on. all of you. You know, a teacher can use up an Amazon gift card in half a I second. I can use an so. Amazon gift card. Yeah, I, can, I can think of plenty other ways that you guys served our school. It's been just an incredible journey, and we appreciate your partnership with us. 
Yeah, and we just uh, want to continue that. So just so you know, I'm saying in front of all of our church yes. right now, if you think of something, you tell us first because we want to be the ones to be able to partner with you and be in this community. Pastor Darren, we need your labor pretty soon. We're redoing our sandbox. So. Oh, is that right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Better call the chiropractor. Back is what we do. Get that appointment ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's I love it. I love it. I love Sequoia so much. Again, it's not something, just what we talked about. This is not just a place that we, we just rent on a Sunday. No. We have invested into this community, into this school, and, and, and we really think of it as our school. This yes. is our school, and, and this is our principal, and we want to be able to bless them in tremendous ways. We're so thankful for the opportunities that we've had in the past, and we can't wait for the opportunities that we have in the future Let's to go. be irrational in our generosity. Come on, somebody. Could you give it up one more time for Dr. Wynn? Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I love it so much. Children's Cup is something that that we didn't even know, like it, it didn't even start with being as, as great as it is right now, and, and it's just continuing to blossom. We had no idea that when we came here all of those years ago that, that we would be able to have all of the opportunities to be able to help so many people out and to be generous to our school. And, and another one of those areas, it's my favorite thing that we get to be able to do around here, it truly is, is that we on a monthly basis, that we get to support an amazing organization called Convoy of Hope, and here's a little video about that.
Thank you for loving this church. Thank you for loving the mission of God. And what we get to do together is greater than what we can do apart from one another. You're a great part of the convoy. I love that we get to do this together as churches in partnership. And you've got great leaders leading the charge for you as Focus Church. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generosity, for your prayers, for your partnership to make a difference all around the world. God bless you, Focus Church. So proud of you and the work God is doing in you and through you. God bless you. Convoy. Love Convoy so much. It, it's just amazing to be able to be part of an organization that you think about Convoy of Hope, and many times we think about the disaster relief that, that it happens immediately. But as you can see, that there are there are there are things that are going on all of the time. And Feed One uh, that he mentioned in there, that feeding program for only ten dollars a month, which is just absolutely wild for ten dollars a month that you can feed uh, a child. And that's something that that we've been part of for a long time. Being able to go down to Haiti uh, a number of years ago to be able to see all of those things that happen. And and what we do at, at places like Feed My Starving Children, where we we package that food together and then we send it off to places. That's where it goes. Is to places like Children's cup and places like Convoy of Hope with Feed One, and I've been able to be there to, to scoop out that food that we package at Feed My Starving Children and to be able to give it to those kids, and it is absolutely phenomenal. These are just part of the organizations that we get to be a part of and partner with to see the mission of God fulfilled all across the world. But it's not just stuff that happens all across the world, not just places like Children's Cup going to Honduras and, and Convoy of Hope and Haiti and different places like that. No, again, local places like Sequoia Pathfinder, local places like every single school within this area, high schools that have uh, students that need Jesus in a big way, which is why I can't wait to be able to share with you one of the other partners that we have uh, is one of my favorite individuals and one of my favorite organizations that we get to be part of, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And somebody give it up for Jeremy Sather today. Come on, somebody. Come on, give it up for him. Come on, church. That's what I'm talking about. I love Jeremy so much. And, and Jeremy, Jeremy is, uh, well, tell us, what, what, is, what, what is your, your current, because I know it's changed a couple of times. So what is your current title with, with FCA? So first of all, I like to, I'm usually, I kind of live on the verge of a heart attack my whole, like I have the same juice that Darren has, <laughs> but, but like, I, like today I, I feel like I'm like lazy guy with your <laughs> juice here. So, so this is all the time, 24 seven. Me too. So me too. So you and Christine, my wife is over here. You guys can sit together and Hi. hug each other. I don't know what, <laughs> what you have to do. We will. But I, I love, I, I want to be like that no matter what I'm doing. If I'm the custodian, I'm spinning the, the mop above my head. Like I love the juice that you have because yeah, not every now. church is blessed with that. So you guys should maybe clap for that juice on <laughs> Sunday morning. I love that, I love that you say juice. That you got that kind of juice because because one of the one of the, the the little nicknames that my boys have for me is big juice. Come on now, come on. <laughs> big juice. And he put twenty that's pounds when I come out, straight. That's like, when I come out from the there. gym. When I come back from the so. gym and they looking at me and they're like, "Dang, big juice, what's up with you?" <laughs> That's called the pump. That's what that is. I love well, it. Well, I would like to, first, my <laughs> wife is over here, Christine. She has to put up with me all the time and the verge of the heart attack. And I, we had to be here at 9, so we were here at 8.30. So I was rushing her out the door. So. Let's go, baby. And then my son is over there. Um, my other two kids are not with us because they're like, Dad, great that you got ministry today, but we're serving at the church. So there we're going there. So I thought that's that was pretty stinking it. sweet. I so love that. We're, we're, we're doing something. Or she's doing something. Right? I love so. that. So, so what, my name is Jeremy Saith. I work for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I'm the area director for the East Valley um, of, of our area here. So we have 50 high schools 50 in that area. Schools. We have three colleges. ASU has, is its own region, so that's not part of us. We have our own people there. Yeah. That, they're strictly on that mega town, yeah. whatever yes. that is. So, um, And then we're actually in with three club sports right now. I love three it area so clubs. So. I love it. So, so in other words, you got a lot you got a lot going on in areas, and, and one of the things that, that I love about Jeremy so much and what is very special about the relationship that Focus Church has with FCA and specifically with Jeremy is, is, is that we got to be part of the very beginning of your story. Yeah, yeah, so kind of cool. Um, we came down here. We felt like God was moving us to be a high school football coach. Uh, my wife was sick of the snow because we're in Minnesota as well. Like, Let's get the heck out of here. Yes. So I'm like, I like this lady more and yes. more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we moved down here, felt like God called us to be a head high school coach, got fired a year in. So that oh, was a on. neat experience for us. So yeah. we're officially coaching family now once you get fired. So um, 
<laughs> once, once that happened, we had an opportunity for another head job or FCA. And FCA is a cool opportunity, and I absolutely stink and love what I get to do every day. But as we sat there and the guy said, raise $100,000, and then you get to start. And I'm like, man, and you're talking about the Holy Ghost. And I love when he just, like, talks to me. I just would love, like, a verbal or send me a text. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes he uses my wife. And sometimes I was like, like just hit me with a car and send yeah. me the message that way. But she yeah. said, hey, what would you do if you didn't have to do it, if you just signed on the paper? What do you think God would have you do? And I'm like, well, I, man, I'm a hurting coach right now. I'd love to minister to coaches and athletes. Yeah. I've been doing this for 25 seasons. I'd love to go love on kids all over the valley. And um, so she's like, well, maybe that's what God's calling you to do. I'm like, oh, dang it. <laughs> I don't know. The hard thing. Maybe you can. I don't know if you can say. I don't know if you can say "dang it" from up there. So, I don't. <laughs> but I. But I'm like, man, I think that's it. And God's blessed us, and we got started, and we get to go into these schools, and we get to spend every Friday morning together, and we bring donuts and pizza in there because there's a lot of good uh, kids that have come in the door for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I think there's there's probably a number of us uh, men in the room that maybe came in because she was in there. <laughs> Maybe came in for the wrong reason, and yeah. God used that to get us in the door. So if they come in for a donut or a pizza, awesome. Yeah. Then they get a chance to hear about Jesus from somebody. So uh, how we kind of started going back to the very beginning is that we just got fun and it get started, and then I had enough for the, the basics, and I'm like, Darren, man, we got to spend six bucks a week on donuts for <laughs> Eastmark. Well, we, uh, you know what? Be, you're getting a little ahead of the story. Okay, I'll stop. Because, because I'm the, excited. The story. I'm trying to live the, on that edge. Yeah, of that. Right? I'm trying yeah. to match your juice there. So the, the story goes back a little bit further than that. You're all right. So you're in the process. You just got fired from that. You just got fired from the coaching job, and you're, and you're in that place where you're like, what are we going to do? And you had some of those opportunities that were available, and you're just sitting there saying, what are we going to do? God, I need to know that you're in control, almost. Like, no, I don't want to put those words, but necessarily. You're, I need to know. And, and, and during that time, uh, that one of, the, one of my good friends here and one of the overseers of our church is, is Pastor Daniel Voss, who is the pastor down at Mountain View in uh, almost oh, in man. Santan, like the very far south of, of Queen Creek. Yes. And, and he had me come down and preach on a Wednesday night. And, uh, and when I was preaching on a Wednesday night to the group, and, 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 and Jeremy and your wife, you guys were there. All five. Uh, all five of you guys were there. So the whole family was there, and, and, I, I'm, and I'm preaching, and I was preaching about, I was preaching about parasols. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And, and, and you know, if I'm preaching about parasols exceedingly and abundantly, that yeah, you're word, you know, that, that, that I'm, I'm going to use the example there of Chick-fil-A go. sauce. Because <laughs> what, what's better than one Chick-fil-A sauce? A parasol. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. It's almost like our church has heard that one before, <laughs> right? And so, and so you guys have been there, and, and you know that, that, that example of, of, me, of me throwing out those Chick-fil-A sauces, right? And, and being able to, to just say that, that when you need to know that God is in control, that you need some comfort, go to Chick-fil-A and ask for two parasols. Can I get an amen, right? And so, and so I'm, 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 I'm throwing out those, those Chick-fil-A sauce. And, and as I'm throwing out those Chick-fil-A sauce, do you, you remember what you told me? I don't know if I remember the quote, but I do remember the thought, like, this guy is crazy and I want to <laughs> meet him. Because that's the kind of people I want to surround myself with, is people that love Jesus, that have an energy and a joy. Because I don't think anybody's following the, the guy walking to church yeah, like this. Yeah. I want somebody that's, I don't want to be the guy following my wife in there. I want to oh, be the one like, good. hey, let's think and go, and yeah. let's get out there. And that's the way the guy, was, he's chucking, what, what's he even talking about? He's <laughs> chucking stuff on the stage. I need to meet this guy. I want to sit with him because he's Jesus is out loud, but I don't remember the exact quote. So you're sitting there, and I, I, I won't forget it because you and your wife came up to me afterwards. And, uh, and, and you, you said, man, I got to, like you said, I, I want to talk to you. And he said, I just got fired from my job, and I need to know that God was in control. And he said, and as you're throwing out those packets of Chick-fil-A sauce, I, I thought, God, just let me catch one of those. Let me catch one of those packets. And if I can catch one of those packets, then I know that you've got my back. And he said, and as soon as I was saying that, one of them was coming my way. And I thought, this is it. God's got me. And just then, some little punk kid <laughs> jumped up and grabbed it. And I didn't get it. And you, you, he's already feeling defeated. He said he's already in that place where he's feeling defeated. He just got fired from his job, and he's like, oh, God. And he puts his head down. He just said, I don't want to be that guy with my head down. And you put your head down, and you look down, 
and there was a Chick-fil-A package sitting on his foot. <laughs> and in that moment, he's sitting there like, I don't want to tell on you, but I'm going to tell on you. I'm sitting there, and my man, strong football coach, crying, knowing that God is in control. Yes, come on. And that began to solidify a relationship that we had. And now you're in that position. Now you're FCA, and you got six dollars that you need. You need six bucks for some donuts to go per to a week. Mart. So that is a whole. That was yeah, twenty four. Right? Yeah, twenty four bucks. Yeah, you're like, and you're like, I ain't got no money, man. Like, I, <laughs> uh, they they ain't paying FCA guys a whole lot of money. And so he he calls me up, and he's like, he's like, I don't know if you remember me, but you know, we were at Mountain View and all that kind of stuff. And and uh, and he's like, could we could we get um could we get coffee at, at Starbucks? And so we sit down at Starbucks and we go through that conversation. Awesome. And I'd like to, I like the, the little quote on there, and we kind of poked our son who's sophomore and trying to figure out what he's trying to do it for the next 30, 40 years. And it said, what would you do as a little kid? And I think that big God-sized vision is something we talk about a bunch. And I came into a meeting and we talk about it a ton in FCA. Like, we need to find people that are interested in partnering with us. And we have people that have done that for 25 bucks a month and we've got it all the way up. But it's, it's something different than I'd ever done is ask people f for financial help. And I, I think God had used the, the financial where we had built to build a pride in myself. Um, so I went to sit with Darren reading all these things about, man, let's have a God-sized vision. Let's have that little kid vision like on that video. And I came in and I sat with your head pastor and I boldly asked for $6 a week. Come on. <laughs> Would your church... He, he asked me, what would you, I wasn't even going to ask. I just was meeting him with him because I wanted to have someone in there. Pastor Ben, I, he, is he in here still? Good. So I'm um, pause that. Yeah. If you love Pastor Ben, that happened at another high school That's with right. his dad. Yeah. His dad's like, yeah, my son's trying to figure out life. I think he's going to take an internship. And we had just had pizza like right. days before. And I'm like, wait. Okay. So if you like Pastor Ben, that's my fault. So yeah. <laughs> Let's go. If you if you don't like Pastor Ben, <laughs> Darren hired him. So I don't. I'll, but um, now I'm so all over funny. the place. But I, I as we're leaving, I just wanted to connect with them because I wanted somebody in here because our vision is have them uh, coaches and athletes in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and His church. Because 25, 35, 45 minutes with our huddle, our group down the campus is phenomenal. But some are we, every other week. Yeah. You can't grow in that way. Yeah. So we need to have them in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. And I know that there's a live church touching Eastmark High School. Come on. Come on. So I met Darren and I said, hey, I want somebody in there every stinking week. And if nobody comes to your church on it, I don't care. Great. But I want them to have an answer for a great excuse is I don't know where to go. Yeah. Like, that's a great excuse not to go. But they're going to not have that excuse at Eastern right. High School. Because Pastor on. Ben is there every, every Friday, Friday morning. morning. Every so, Friday morning. Every Friday morning. So that was my original thought. And as I'm walking out the door uh, of, of Starbucks, uh, Pastor Darren says, what, 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 what do you need? I'm like, this is it. Got You <laughs> open the door. Six bucks is off my plate for a week. <laughs> and I said, hey, we want to bring them in with donuts. You know, let's bring Eastmark in at donuts. At that time, we were serving 200 co coaches and athletes in the East Valley. Very cool. Um, and Darren said, you want six bucks a week? <laughs> it was the most, like, you're an idiot comment anybody's <laughs> ever told me. So if you think he's, like, super Jesus guy, like, he was, like, almost a jerk to me. <laughs> well, yeah, was big. that too big? Can you buy it every other week? <laughs> But it was kind of a cool reminder of me, like, what the <laughs> heck is our vision? And, and we talk about the generosity, and the cool thing for me is I was oh, a coach, and we, we made a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and coaching and teaching. We were making, like, a lot of money, as you guys know. $30,000, right? Every year. Yeah. Every year. <laughs> every year. So, but that was something that I kind of like that climb. I like that financial thing. And I've been completely freed with that with FCA. Come and on. I'm so blessed. And we've, we've figured out the generosity thing and the joy that comes with it yes. is very cool. I said, but, come on, Jeremy, give me a dream. And, give and, me your dream. What's the real dream? What do, you, what do you need to be able to see this thing happen? And, and that's where we're at. And that's a continued focus for me now. Is that Now I have the dream. When somebody asks me that now, I'll tell you, it's $513,000 a year for the That's 10 it. of us to run around the East Valley. We're now serving 1,500 coaches and athletes in the East Valley. Oof. 
And I don't say that for numbers because this guy had another jerk moment, which <laughs> saved me. You know, do you remember this one? I was sitting there telling multiple. you. There's been multiple. I don't yeah, know what you're talking about. Yeah, one time you hit me, and that didn't yeah, happen. Okay, yeah. But, but he sat, we sat for pizza in Queen Creek, and, and I was like, man, we're rolling. This thing's going and going and going and going. He's like, hey, coach guy, like, your, your, number, your idol is numbers. And like, no, it's not. Your number is yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, it hit me. And it really was. As a coach, I wanted the next player and the yeah. next dollar and the next. And he hit me with that. And I share that all the stinking time. Come on. Because how many of us are tied up into that? Come yep. on. And you, that's, that freed me. Because I, so I share with you 1,500, and I don't share that for any other reason, the fact that God is doing it. That's John, right. John 3.30 is Amen. we must decrease, God must increase. That's Amen. Right. That's me and that's him. the most freeing, stinking verse I, I that, I've, that it's been right to me. Like, it, Darren said that, Pastor Darren said that, and then that verse came to me. And that's freeing. Like, I don't matter. So I'm praying out here. We're getting ready to come up here, and I'll share for two hours, so shut me up when we're done. <laughs> but, but I'm praying. I'm like, God, I hope I say the right thing. I'm like. And the verse hits me in the face. And like, God, I hope I don't say a word. I hope it's you speaking yeah, through me up on. here. So um, we've gone to 1,500 coaches and athletes. We, I, I looked it up. We were in the parking lot. We've given out 1,097 Bibles in the East Valley in the Let's last go. two and a half years. And I couldn't do that without, without people that are partnering with me, without churches that are partnering with me. So we I came, can't say came, thanks he enough. He came with that $6. And I said, come on, Jeremy, what, what's the real dream? And he said, well... There's this guy that'll do a matching fund for five thousand dollars, and then he'll put another five thousand dollars on, and that would be that'd be crazy if we could get going with that. And I said, "Done." And my man's sitting there crying, thinking that again? he was you just getting cry six again? bucks. Because the idiot, because the idiot started by asking <laughs> for he, six bucks a week. And he's. <laughs> And, and, and here's the reason why we could just say it just like that is because I knew that God put us in this community to be able to reach this community. That's right. And it doesn't matter if we come, just like he said, it doesn't matter if they come to school here or not, mm -mm. because I know that Pastor Ben is going to be at that school every single Friday morning. Yep. And not just because of that, but because of his faithfulness that he's been there, that last year during baccalaureate, which is a service that they have for all of the seniors, who did they ask to speak baccalaureate? Pastor, Pastor Ben. ben. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of his faithfulness. And the reason why we're able to have that faithfulness of not just the presence of Pastor Ben being there, but being able to support Jeremy and FCA yes. is because of your generosity. Come on, somebody. Yes, Isn't God good? Yes. Isn't God good? Yes. Can we give it up for how good God yes. is, how he is blessing us over and over? Can we give it up for Jeremy and FCA? Come on, somebody. Thank you, Thank you very Come much. Come on, somebody. I love it so much. I love the fact that he Be just great. gave that verse, John 3, 30, because if you were here with us last week, the prayer that I asked you to be able to pray is John 3, 30, less of me and more of him in this world that he may become greater and greater and that I can become less and less. And there's a reason why that God just put that on his heart. That's called being led by the Holy Spirit. So somebody needs to be able to hear that more and more and more so that you can have the Holy Spirit work inside of your life so that you can have that generosity move in a tremendous way. This is not something that we just talk about. This is the life that we live as individuals and as a church. We got to hear about how we give to, uh, to Children's Cup. We got to hear about how we give to, to Convoy of Hope. We got to hear about how we give to Sequoia Pathfinder. We got to hear about how we give to FCA. And again, my favorite thing that we do around here at Focus Church is that we give to this organization called the Association of Related Churches, how we affectionately call ARC.
I love ARC so much. It truly is like my favorite thing. They're all my favorites, as you can see. I just love them so much because each and every single one of those organizations that we are part of, they are, they are effective. And that's one of the things that is so important for us is that, is that we partner with individuals that we have relationship with so that we can be extremely and irrationally generous because we know how effective that those organizations are. And it is an honor that we get to be able to do that on behalf of building the kingdom of God and having the Holy Spirit be generous inside of our lives so that we can be generous to the world around us. Has anybody ever had the Holy Spirit be generous in their life? I'm going to ask that one more time. Has anybody have the, ever had the Holy Spirit be generous inside of your life? I know that the generosity that God showed me was enough that he changed my life. He changed my life so much that I became, I became a new person. That, that the old was gone and the new has come because of the generosity of God. And he has done that with so many individuals just here at Focus Church. And how we talked about changing the generation, single generation of Christians that here at Focus Church even in the past year, in the past year, just this year alone, that we have seen almost 20 people get baptized. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, the baptism of the water baptism, it, it, it's, it's a symbol of what God is doing on the inside of our lives, and it's an outward expression where we get to tell people, this is what God has done for me. And so today, we get to baptize three more individuals, and so we're getting excited, and I want to be able to encourage you. If you've got family, if you've got family that's here, I want to encourage you, you need to be able to stand up, walk over here, get pictures, and do all that kind of stuff, because you don't want to miss this, but we're, we, we celebrate celebrate baptisms around here. This is something that we stand up with, that we shout out our praises, that we sing because we're celebrating. And I know this, that the celebration that we have here is nothing compared to the celebration that's happening up in heaven today. I know it's nothing compared to how much God is looking down upon these individuals. And just as the way he said to Jesus, he said, this is my son who I'm well pleased, is that today he's looking down and he's saying, this is my daughter who I am well pleased. This is my son who I am well pleased. And so church, please stand with me. Get excited and begin to sing praises to Jesus today.